So, all right, I guess we can have a, a brief little discussion just about reiterating our goals, what we're trying to get out of this, and you know, how can we define the kind of book we're not trying to make versus the kind of book we are trying to make at the end of this process. Does anybody want to take that first question there? What are we looking at in terms of like monographs versus textbooks? Almost like kind of reporting back and we're, we're concerned about hierarchy of information in a monograph for sure, just like we are with any, any piece of written text. Um, but what we're thinking about here and something that can be on your mind as you're requesting proposals or talking to authors is those additional tools, and things that clearly state, here's what you should get out of this chapter, or things that maybe give an overview of what you're gonna talk about, or things that are gonna kind of close up the chapter and say, prompts for learning, uh, things that can further discussions, maybe some additional resources for people. That goes back into basically that almost composition edit, and kind of goes way back. But we're, again, in the workflow that we're discussing, that welcome document workflow, it's not like there are these discrete things and you're just handing it out to somebody and you don't care about what happens next. Even at the composition stage, we're gonna be thinking about how things are gonna function in the design, how things are gonna function in the ebook. So we're looking at really the whole process and everyone working in this process is gonna be thinking about the entire process as well. That's gonna get into uh, InDesign specifically because in most cases, unlike editorial where I, my sense is that people are probably a little bit better with working with Word and text here, and are maybe more out of, out of our depth when it comes to actually doing the layout. So more, about, more of the outsourcing may happen at this stage, and this is where we need to learn what to look out for and what issues can come up. Because if you're working with a designer who doesn't use our system or isn't familiar with it, they may be used to kind of working in their own way in the background, and that's not something that we can have happen here. Because a lot of the work that we did in composition and editorial can be lost in typesetting. Um, I will give you just another nightmare scenario because we're working with a client who likes to do things their own way and doesn't have that appreciation of the process. And they've been using things like Google Docs and stuff like that to edit their text. And it just blows out all styles that we define in composition. So now to typeset things and to make sure that the online aspects of this book are, are being handled, it's, uh, for, you know, some work that you have to do again to hold on to that. And this is, it's not disparaging anybody. It, it's it, us having a discussion that that's what works best for their editors. But for future projects, we're just going to let them handle stuff and then hand it to us as opposed to doing our normal aspect. So again, that might involve having a communication with your team. It, it, are your editors unable to work in Word? Well, then maybe you do want to edit first and then compose afterwards. Um, but so that's, that's one thing to keep in, keep in mind. You know, can we build in these textbook aspects really early on into the process as opposed to waiting, uh, waiting for later? We developed our own vocabulary here. Um, that, that happens a lot, especially as you talk to other people and other, you know, print things. Uh, I've experienced that a lot where all of a sudden people are using a new term I've never heard of and you kind of have to think of like, oh, okay, that's what you mean. That's what you refer to. Um, you know, are you justifying a text frame or are you carding it or are you feathering it? They all kind of mean the same things, but depending on where people learn that they have different terms for the same thing. Um, okay, so let's, uh, speaking of that, I'm just really curious to see, are there things in books that you guys like or dislike? You know, we're going to be looking at defining conventions and as the project managers that really kind of fall to use okay things or to say yes or no. I mean, are there things in books you've seen maybe in some of the samples? that have annoyed you or in, or in books that you see every now and again? Because I think what's kind of fun about this aspect is that you get to define it in your way. So if there's something that you see people keep doing and you want to change the world and have your book not do it, now is the opportunity. Definitions are nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oof. Those captions, yeah. Kelly's response rings very true to me because we see that often. Um, when you look at bad images, it's just such a bummer. Um, that, that is something we're going to talk about today, too. Organizing and accounting for images. We use something called an art log, but we'll get into that a little bit more. Um, but it's nice that as the project manager now, we get to kind of take accountability for these things and say, we're going to define our book and, and make it the way that we want it to make. Uh, 
if Richard brings up a really good point of definition of the glossary, if your book doesn't include that, that may be something that you want to build into it as well. I think uh, Elvis, I would really fall under the editorial stage, but it does go way back to that planning, that composition stage of identifying the elements. So if you're the people who are saying, gosh, it's really important to put into this, then maybe we should build it into. And then we get into the design of it by designing it, making sure that it's correct, making sure that it's helpful, and figuring out ways to kind of call out these terms. You may do it you know, in the actual book itself, where in the book you're highlighting these glossary terms in a specific way so that it rings up to a student like, oh, this is an important term, I should know it, and I can refer back to the glossary um, after all these terms are kind of collected. Let's see, Richard, say left in books, I'll just interrupt this glossary example. Yeah, yeah, that's another important point, Richard. So a lot of these things are uh, heavy advocacy paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Karen brings up a certain point just about the aesthetic of it. Um, you know, what kind of paper are you guys going to choose? Uh, the margins comes into a very important point when we're working about with, uh, with books like this. Now we can kind of build in functionality, and that gets into uh, my next point, uh, point number three, like what features can we build in for students? We've already kind of discussed a glossary. I think the margins are helpful because now we've allowed space for students to take notes or refer back to, so it's kind of functioning as instructional book and notebook all in one. Um, I've seen other textbooks that include specifically note sections for students so that they can kind of keep everything in one place. So, you know, what, what kind of features can we build into our book at this stage? Can I well, there's two examples. So there's one book that Elvis is working on that we were just discussing. It's a new project, and it does exactly that. The author, I think, is used to just having this Word document. And so it says things like this video here, you know, look at this video and come back to me. Well, we're making a print version of that book, so we have to figure out what we're going to do. Does that mean that we're going to introduce something like a Wait. little box or sidebar? Sorry. Um, box or sidebar. Oh, okay. I don't, I'll keep going. Um, box or sidebar that says, you know, like web only. Um, but, um, you know, we have to figure out some way to handle that both in the editorial and in the print version of it. Um, now, there's a similar book that we did that had links to websites that needed to be maintained for the web version, but needed to be hidden for the print version. Um, something I'll show you guys today when we look at the InDesign file is something that you might recall from um, the Compose version. There are those brackety structure tags, you know, begin, end chapter, things like that. Um, let me show you guys the Word version of it. Something to do. Nope. And well, too, um, because oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was gonna say so. We have these, these issues basically built into every single project that we work on because we have these begin and chapter structure tags. Now, obviously, in a print book, we don't want it to say begin chapter and chapter, begin chapter and chapter, but it serves a function later on in the book. So, we use a tool in design called conditional text. And we basically turn off anything that is applied to that, that has that condition applied to it. So it is hidden in the book, and then it comes out correctly in the ebook version of it. Um, so that can be done to a list, it can be done to text. In the case I was talking about before, we applied a condition to those links so that they were in the file, and they got taken out into the ebook version of it, or rather, the web version in this in a specific example. All right. Yeah. Okay. I thought you were going to add something. Yeah, I was just going to add that when you're thinking about this, especially in, you know, like in that initial planning stage or even during, um, you know, the editorial portion of, you know, this process, when you're thinking about like, okay, I want to use videos in my textbook, um, you know, can't use it in the, in the print. So, you know, I'm going to have to have a link there. Um, you can actually, you know, talk to the editor and say, you know, we need to make sure that the language for referring to these videos is consistent throughout. And then once we get to the ebook portion, and once we actually get to that training, um, I'll show you how to do this. You can actually just search for that, um, like search string or that um, specific wording, and then create, you know, what you need to create so that you can embed um, all the videos and you can do that sort of rather autom automatically. But that sort of takes a little bit of planning, um, you know, ahead of time. So, you know, that's always something good to think about. 
and like sort of like what we've been discussing, all of these are not things that are afterthoughts. They are part of your book, you know, and so it should be something that, um, you know, you put thought into uh, right um, from the beginning. 